Hi guys, my name is Varro Dante. Today I want to share with you how to create the best realistic digital brush. By best, I mean the kind of brush that would look very realistic in all real work scenarios. And the kind of brush that would be most useful for actual work. So you would be able to actually create good paintings with it. I'll be using my favorite digital painting tool, which is iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. And my favorite art software on iPad, Art Studio Pro. If you want to know why I made these choices, check out these videos where I talk about iPad Pro and Art Studio Pro. Now to the point, the best brush I can give you is this. This is my latest and most favorite brush. It has a realistic, constantly changing profile. It adapts perfectly to different sizes, including really small ones as well. It blends colors very efficiently without the need to use any kind of jittering, therefore having a clean and sharp shape of the stroke. The constantly changing profile makes the brush look different during this one stroke. You can see how it's changing all the time. So even if you decide to keep some raw strokes on your artwork, they will still look interesting and realistic, something that would actually look expressive and awesome on your artwork instead of just looking like something unfinished. And the canvas texture that I specifically created for this brush has a realistic and kind of a wet feel to it. Not just a dry photo of a canvas, but actually looking like some kind of wet paint sticking to the canvas. And finally, this brush supports tilting or specific specifically rotation, so the shape of the brush is kind of an oval shape and you can choose how exactly to manipulate the shape of your stroke by rotating your pencil in different directions. So just yesterday, Art Studio Pro had an update that greatly improved the performance, specifically of the flat blending that my brush is using, the kind of blending that allows you to easily create soft gradients by making strokes along the edge. So now this kind of brush can work very fast at huge sizes. Feels amazing. I don't even have to mention that I'm recording from the screen so the processor of iPad is not 100% dedicated to this rendering it's still really fast, like on working sizes is just an immediate brush. So to celebrate this fact, this brush that I'm showing you right now will be included in the next update of Art Studio Pro as one of its default brushes, which is awesome. Look out for Boro Dante wet brush. I assume in wet painting department. Now let's quickly go through some steps on how to create this kind of brush. We'll start with a basic brush so anyone could catch on. It will totally work for many other software, not on iPad. On iPad only our studio can do this, but on desktop Photoshop can go halfway. Paintstorm Studio will generally work. It has pretty much all the functionality. So I'll start with uh, this hard 500 pixel brush. Let's make it 300. So we'll start with the stamp, obviously. You can create any image you want. The rule of thumb is it's best to use some kind of a brush that is close to being round or slightly oval. These brushes would work, but this was pretty much an experiment. I don't need stamps that are ovals because for that we have a constructor of a round brush. And so for the purpose of the tutorial, I'll show you how to create a realistic brush based on just an actual simple optimized circle stamp. So we'll make it a 300 size. We'll make it slightly oval, which means we'll squeeze it, let's say 75%. Let's make it not as hard, so maybe 65%. Yeah, that's a bit softer. Our goal is not to create a soft brush, but this will be very useful to apply texture on. So we have the shape, now let's apply some dynamics. Dynamics mean how brush changes based on the pressure or the tilting that you apply to your pencil. The only two things that you really need are opacity and flow. Do not change the size of the brush with pressure, at least a lot. You may change it a little bit, just so a singular stroke would look a bit more interesting. But overall, we don't need it, so we'll go with pressure for opacity and pressure for flow. And we'll have this, if I press slightly, we have a softer brush stroke. 
Now, opacity control won't show up in a wet paint tool. It will show up in a paint tool, the dry one. In this case, you see, like my other brush, it has the opacity control that allows you creating these soft, dry layers, which is really useful. And also another great thing about the brush I'm creating, that it can work in any kind of tool. Paint tool, wet paint tool, or the blender, or an eraser for that matter. So let's get back to our brush. We now have an oval brush that reacts to pressure. And for the sake of realistic brush stroke, I'll also change the size of the brush, but I'll make it in this kind of uh, like a fat shape of the stroke, not linear. So if we release quickly, it would have like a nice ending of the stroke instead of having like a super sharp, unrealistic tapper. Like if I would reset, it would look like this really bad. But yeah, let's make a the change of the size like 85% for the minimum size so it will be just making itself a bit smaller when you let go of the stroke awesome let's apply some texture let's go to the pattern turn it on and choose some kind of texture in my case I have this one as you can see it's this texture the photo of a canvas that I increased contrast on and then blurred so it would look like this kind of like a smooth height map of a canvas at which the paint would be catching so this is a perfect kind of texture let's make it much smaller well 35% will be totally enough now now multiply won't do let's use height and opacity should be like 15% for height it usually should be really small we may need to adjust it later when we'll apply the dual brush but for now it's already starting to look like something it's still a simple smooth round brush but it has some realistic texture to it now before we move on and make this brush much more advanced a couple of notes on how to make sure your brush performs well first of all don't don't choose shapes for the stamp that are too sharp. Like, for instance, you could have chosen some kind of image. It would reveal the steps very easily. You would have to make the steps of the brush very tiny to compensate for that great detail. And who needs it anyway? If you need greater detail, just make the brush smaller and make those strokes. So something much closer to a blurry circle is a great base for the brush. And yeah, don't make too small of a spacing. Right now I have 10%. Maybe we'll need to go a bit smaller than that. But but generally, if you're looking at your brush at a big size and it shows some obvious steps that we'll see later, don't mind that too much because you never finish a painting with giant brush strokes. You finish a painting with small brush strokes. No matter how much you can see any kind of steps on a bigger brush, if you go smaller with the same brush, you won't see any steps. It will look perfect, even at a middle size. That's just how brushes work. And you will always be covering those big, ugly strokes with smaller ones with a much higher quality. So no need to make your brush lag on a big size. So let's move on and make the brush a bit more interesting. Let's go back to dynamics and apply angle dynamics with the rotation of the pencil so now we can tilt our brush at any direction this oval is now rotating but as you can see it's in a wrong direction right now it's perpendicular to the pencil and we kind of want it to be this way probably so let's go ahead and go back to the stamp and rotate the stamp 90 degrees there we go this looks great now this is the part where we can go much slimmer like 50% will make a much flatter brush which is great to work with as well and this is one of the tricks and just an awesome thing about specifically using the uh, circle generator or the square generator for your main brush tip you can control the hardness make it very smooth if you want or very sharp you can make it oval in a square shape let's actually switch to it because it's also great as you can see in the preview this is a rounded square so you can control the radius of those corners and if you go 100% you will get a circle again you can squeeze it and literally have the same oval rotated 90 degrees and we have the same brush but it's initially a square and therefore we have more control we can actually make the corners not as round and get like something in between a brick and a circle a squircle 
that's not really a squircle though. But yeah, you can gradually change the shape of your brush without the need to like use actually different brushes. Just adjust the shape a little bit and you'll be able to do whatever you want with the single brush. So yeah, let's make it softer too, right? So there we go. This is the brush we're having right now. Now we pretty much have everything we need now, but where's all the realistic stuff? Let's create a dual brush. It's called Aux Stamp. I don't know how to pronounce this. Let's turn it on and choose some kind of bristly texture. This time circle won't do. And I have my favorite ones right here. Uh, let's choose this one. Like it should be thick enough to have like a dense center. But overall it should be consistent of very blurry and differently sized naturally positioned clusters, big spots that would look like a bunch of bristles stuck together. They look much more realistic this way comparing to if I would use like a brush that looked like this, this would look really bad. Because bristles don't act like that when you actually paint with a wet paint. Now as we chose it, we need to make the size of the secondary brush the same size or close to the same size as what we have on the main size of the brush. So let's go with 300 pixels. Now let's go back to the main aux stamp settings and turn on each stroke, which is really important. Without each stroke turned on, dual brush won't appear for the wet paint tool. So right now it's actually showing up. Let's set it up a bit more. So spacing we don't need. If we're using each stroke, it's just gonna be applied to every stroke of the main brush. Spacing won't do anything. So the modes, all kinds of modes may work with different types of brush shapes. So let's use darken and pretty much this way maybe increase flow of the brush in general. Okay, it's too transparent and we also see quite strong steps. So let's make the steps a bit smaller. I don't know, 7%. The smaller the steps, the stronger the flow of the brush as well. So yeah, we can go this way, we can go even 5%. Our studio works pretty well with this as well. So yeah, this is what we have. Now let's Let's go back to pattern and adjust its opacity. I said 15 would work best, let's give it a try. So we'll have a bit of a stronger body for the stroke. Actually looking pretty good. That's kind of a rectangular brick brush. Let's make it a bit rounder. So this is looking pretty good. Now finally, let's add some variation to the stroke. Right now, if we make a stroke, it's gonna look the same way along the whole stroke. And to change that, we can rotate the secondary brush. And so in rotation, I'll go, let's say, 10 degrees or whatever it is 10 something it's the speed of rotation so now as you can see the brush is constantly changing a little bit extra bristles appear and disappear on the perimeter of the stroke looking way better just this one tweak makes things so much more interesting now one thing though we could make the flow smaller like to a zero and make the general opacity of the pattern stronger up to 15 and then we'll have this kind of brush that's revealing the texture really well and has nice bristles and overall strong body of the stroke. But let's push it even further. Now we want to blend colors with the brush. As you can see, it kind of does it a little bit already. Just the default settings are smearing the colors a little bit. But we want to make it much better. We can go to the wetness settings over here and change some parameters. First of all, let's turn on blend transparency. That doesn't seem to affect performance much. And you can actually blend colors on a new transparent layer into like the transparency it looks really good I like it wetness let's increase it up to 85 or maybe 75 percent colors will be stretching much stronger and much smoother along the brush stroke basic kind of blending that procreate has for instance but we don't want to stop there let's add blur radius and make it a hundred percent which turns on the flat mode and this way we get the flat blending together with the directional smearing that creates a very good high quality blending and now as you can see as I press slightly I can kind of blend things around but let's improve that 
that control. So first of all, in here we need to make constant paint at 100% and keep these at zero. We don't need to use that. So now we have a strong solid brush stroke. Now let's go back to dynamics and use the constant paint control with pressure. So if we press slightly, we want to not add too much paint, like actual color of the brush to the canvas. We just want to smear whatever is already on the canvas. When you press slightly with this kind of brush, you can almost use it as just a blender. So I'll even like squeeze it a little bit over here and make the brush work at 100% of opacity when we press stronger. So now I can just blend much better. But as you can you can see the brush stroke is very transparent when I do that so the effect is not that profound and that's why we need to increase the minimum flow to say 15% now when I press slightly the brush won't be just transparent it will be pretty opaque but it will mostly just smear colors around so this is a very like wet brush now that mostly pushes the colors around instead of getting transparent when you press slightly there we go awesome look and yeah at this point you can go ahead and go back to the stamp settings and make it not as squeezed let's say 75 percent you can change the border settings to the hundred percent and that will make your brush an actual oval brush with bristles and everything and yeah you can control flow to make the overall feel of the brush softer or hundred percent will make it very strong and impressive like this just by changing the stamp shape I can make the brush work like this or I have this preset the square that is really flat the squeeze parameter is 25% and now it's this kind of brush I can make it more opaque and I'll have these expressive strong brush strokes that work really fast and awesome so this is it this is the kind of brush you'll get in the next update hope the whole thing was helpful for everyone this is how i approach the brush creation in pretty much any drawing or painting app and as a bonus to those of you who watched to this moment i'll also get to include the borrow pencil in the next update of art studio so this is a really good pencil that looks very much like the real deal with shading and even the thin line looks really well well so these are the two brushes that you'll get and i thank you for watching if you did i guess it did if you're here love a like and subscribe tell a friend set it up do whatever you want and i will see you in the next one bye man this latest update is just such a game changer it's such an awesome feeling to like blend colors with such a huge brush that works so fast it feels so good so much power